Okay, hi everyone, welcome back to the CONTIA Security Plus course, um, Vulnerability and Risk Assessment. Vulnerability assessment is just part of overall risk management. Risks include computer vulnerabilities, potential dangers, possible hardware and software failure, man hours wasted, and of course, monetary loss. Having a computer network is inherently a risky business, so we need to conduct risk risk assessments to define what an organization's risks are and how to reduce those risks conducting risks risk assessments when dealing with computer security a risk is the possibility of a malicious attack or other threat causing damage or downtime to a computer system generally this is done by exploiting vulnerabilities in a computer system or network the more vulnerable Sorry, the more vulnerability, the more risk. Smart organizations are extremely interested in managing vulnerabilities and thereby managing risk. Risk management can be defined as the identification, assessment and prioritization of risks and the mitigating, mitigating and monitoring of those risks. Specifically when talking about computer hardware and software, Risk management is also known as Information Assurance IA. The two common models of IA include the well-known CIA triad and the DOD five pillars of IA, which comprise the concepts of the CIA triad, confidentiality, integrity, and availability, but also include authentication and non-repudiation. Organizations usually employ one of the four following general strategies when managing a particular risk. Transfer the risk to another organization or third party. Avoid the risk. Reduce the risk. Accept some or all of the consequences of a risk. It is possible to transfer some risk to a third party. An example of risk transference, also known as risk sharing, would be an organization that purchased insurance for a group of servers in a data center. The organization still takes on the risk of losing data in the case of server failure, theft and disaster, but transfers the risk of losing the money those servers are worth in case they are lost. Some organizations opt to avoid risk. Risk avoidance usually entails not carrying out a proposed plan because the risk factor is too great. An example of risk avoidance is a high profile organization decided not to implement a new and controversial website based on its belief that too many attackers would attempt to exploit it. However, the most common goal of risk management is to reduce all risk to a level acceptable to the organization. It is impossible to eliminate all risk but it should be mitigated as much as possible within reason. Usually budgeting and IT resources dictate the level of risk reduction and what kind of deterrents can be put in place. For example, installing antivirus firewall software on every client computer is common. Most companies do this. However, installing a high-end hardware-based firewall at every computer is not common although this method would probably make for a secure network. The amount of money an administration needed to implement that solution would make it unacceptable. This leads to risk acceptance, also known as risk retention. Most organizations are willing to accept a certain amount of risk, sometimes vulnerabilities that would otherwise be mitigated by the implementation of expensive solutions are instead dealt with when they are exploited. IT budgeting and resource management are big factors when it comes to these risk management decisions. After the risk transference, risk avoidance and risk reduction techniques have been implemented, an organization is left with a certain amount of residual risk, the risk left over after a detailed security plan and disaster recovery plan have been implemented. There is always risk as a company cannot possibly foresee every future event nor can it secure against every single threat. Senior management as a collective whole is ultimately responsible for deciding how much 
residual risk there will be in a company's infrastructure and how much risk there will be on the company's data often no one person will be in charge of this but it will be decided on as a group there are many different types of risks to computers and computer networks of course before you decide what to do about particular risks you need to assess what those risks are risk assessment is the attempt to determine the amount of threats or hazards that could possibly occur in a given amount of time to your computers and networks when you assess risks they are often re recognize threats but risk management can also take into account new types of threats that might occur when risk has been assessed it can be mitigated up until the point in which the organization will accept any additional risk generally risk assessments follow a particular order for example step one identify the organization's needs step two identify vulnerabilities step three identify threats and threat likelihood step four identify potential monetary impact the fourth step is also known as impact assessment this is when you determine the potential monetary costs related to a threat an excellent tool to create during a risk assessment is a risk register also known as a risk log which helps to track issues and address problems as they occur after the initial risk assessment a security administrator will continue to use and refer to the risk register this can be a great tool for just about any organization but can be of more value to certain types of organizations such as manufacturers that utilize a supply chain in this case the organization would want to implement a special type of risk management called supply chain risk management SCRM this is when the organization collaborates with suppliers and distributors to analyze and reduce risk the two most common risk assessment methods are qualitative and quantitative let's discuss these now qualitative risk assessment qualitative risk assessment is an assessment that assigns numeric values to the probability of a risk and impact it can have on the system or network unlike its counterpart quantitative risk assessment it does not assign monetary value to assets or possible losses it's the easier quicker and cheaper way to assess risk but cannot assign asset value or give an, a total for possible monetary loss with this method ranges can be signed for example 1 to 10 or 1 to 100 the higher the number the higher probability of risk or the greater the impact on the system as a basic example a computer without antivirus software that is connected to the internet will most likely have a high probability of risk it will also most likely have a great impact on the system we could assign the number 99 as the probability of risk we are not sure exactly what will happen but there are 99% sure that it will happen at some point next we could assign the number 99 90 out of 100 as the impact of the risk the number sorry this number implies a heavy impact probably either the system has crashed or has been rendered unusable at some point there is a 10% chance that the system will remain unstable but it is unlikely finally we multiply the two numbers together to find out the qualitative risk 99 by 99 equals 8910 that's 8910 out of a possible 10,000 which is a high level of risk risk mitigation is when a risk is reduced or eliminated altogether the way to mitigate risk in this example would be to install antivirus software and that it is configured to auto update by assigning these types of qualitative values to various risks we can make comparisons from one risk to another and get a better idea of what needs to be mitigated and what doesn't the main issue with this type of risk assessment is that it is difficult to place the exact 
value are many types of risks. The types, the type of qualitative system varies from organization to organization, even from person to person. It is, it is a common source of debate as well. This makes qualitative risk assessments more descriptive than truly measurable. However, by relying on group surveys, company history, and personal experience, we can get a basic idea of the risks involved. Quantitative risk assessment. Quantitative risk assessment measures risk by using exact uh, monetary values. It attempts to give an expected yearly loss in dollars for any given risk. It also defines asset values to servers, routers and other network equipment. Three values are used when making qualitative risk calculations. Single loss expectancy, SLE. The loss of value in dollars based on a single incident. Annualized rate of occurrence, ARO. The number of times per year that the specific incident occurs. Annualized lost expectancy, ALE. The total loss in dollars per year due to a specific incident. The incident might happen once or more than once. Either way, this number is the total loss in dollars for that particular type of instant, it is computed with the following calculation. SLE multiplied by ARO equals ALE. For example, suppose we wanted to find out how much an e-commerce web server downtime would cost the company per year. We would need some additional information such as the average web server downtime in minutes and the number of times this occurs per year. We would also need to know the average sale amount in dollars and how many sales are made per minute on this e-commerce web server. This information can be deduced by using accounting reports and further security analysis of the web server, which we will discuss later. For now, let's just say over the past year our web server failed seven times. The average downtime for each failure was 45 minutes. This equals 350 minutes of downtime per year, close to 99% uptime. The more years we can measure, the better our estimate will be. Now let's say that this web server processes an average of 10 orders per minute with average revenue of $35. This means that 350 of revenue comes in per minute. As we mentioned, a single downtime average 45 minutes corresponds to $15.750 loss per occurrence. So the SLE is $15.750 out. Um, some sales people are going to be unhappy with your 99% uptime, but we're not done. We want to know the annualized loss expectancy, ALE. This can be calculated by multiplying the SLE 15750 by the annualized rate occurrence, ARO. We said that the web server failed seven times last year, so the SLE multiplied by ARE will be 15750 by seven, which equals to 110 that um four two five zero that ALE this is shown in table two one we need to increase the uptime of our e-commerce web server many organizations demand 99.99% or even 99.999% uptime 99.999 uptime means that the server will only have five minutes of downtime over the entire course of the year. Of course, to accomplish this, we first need to scrutinize our server to see precisely why it fails so often. What exactly are the vulnerabilities of the web server? Which ones are were exploited? Which threats exploited those vulnerabilities? By exploring the server logs, configuration and policies, and by using security tools, we can discern exactly why this happens so often. However, this analysis should be done carefully because the web server um, does so much business for the company. We continue, for example, to show the specific tools you can use in the section assessing vulnerability with security tools. 
um, it isn't possible to assign a specific ALE to incidents that will happen in the future. So new technologies should be monitored carefully. Any failures should be documented thoroughly. For example, a spreadsheet could be maintained that contains the various technologies your organization uses, their failure history, their SLE, ARO and ALE and mitigation techniques that you have employed and when they were implemented. Although it's impossible to predict the future accurately, it can be quantified on an average basis using concepts such as mean time between failures, MTBF. This term deals with reliability. It defines the average number of failures per million hours of operation for a product in question. This is based on historical baselines among various customers that use the product. It can be very helpful when making quantitative assessments. There are two other terms you should know that are related to MTBF, mean time to repair MTTR, which is the time needed to repair a field device and mean time to failure MTTF, which is a basic measure of reliability for devices that cannot be repaired. All three of these concepts should be considered when creating a disaster recovery DR plan. So we can't specifically foretell the future, but by using quantitative and quantitative risk assessment methods, we can get a feel for what is likely to happen. More so with the latter option and prepare accordingly. Table 12 to summarize the risk assessments and types discussed in this chapter. Risk assessment type description key points qualitative risk assessment assigns numeric values to the probability of a risk and the impact it can have on the system or network. Numbers are arbitrary. Example 1 10 or 1 100. Qualitative risk assessment measures risk by using exact monetary values. It attempts to give an expected yearly loss in dollars for any given risk. Values are specific monetary amounts. SLE multiplied by ARO equal ALE. MTBF can be used for additional data. So I'm going to see you here today for this video. If you like listening, please consider like, sharing and subscribing. Thank you.